in the meshing step, we will divide the domain into nodes and elements. And in the process, we are going to mark out the selected locations at which we want the answer solver to calculate the temperatures. Go to the project page and double click on model. This brings up ANSYS Mechanical. After a little bit of hesitation, ANSYS Mechanical comes up. So we can specify the mesh here, and we can also specify our boundary conditions and so on. Um, so let's go to, um, let's highlight mesh. And I usually like to throw a default mesh on it. Sometimes it doesn't work for very complex geometries, but usually it works. And then uh, you know tweak that default mesh to, to get a more suitable mesh. So highlight mesh and say update. And that gives me the, the default mesh. And I'm going to turn off the triad here so I can. OK, and I can turn off the ruler if I want under view. I'll keep the ruler for now. And it, I see a little bit of jaggedness in these lines. Uh, I'm not sure you know, if I zoom in here using the right mouse button. I'm not sure if this is an artifact of the, um, the, the graphics display or it's actually a little bit, you know, it's, it's not exactly horizontal. And for regular geometry, you can ask it to give you a regular mesh. And you do that by putting in mesh control and say face meshing. This used to be called map face mesh in previous versions. It's the same thing. And I'm going to, so I, I need to have the face selection filter selected so that I can select in this face or area and then come here and say apply. And let me zoom out here. Okay, and if I look and then I say update the mesh, and that that seems more more regular. And face meshing will work, you know, only for simpler geometries. Um, and if you have something a little bit more complicated, you can give it some guidance, you know, on on trying to get a regular mesh. And I also want to control the number of elements that I want. And I'll say I want four elements along there and eight elements along there. Essentially, I want each element, each edge length to be 0.25 meters. So I'll go to Mesh Control and I'll say Sizing. And I can scope the sizing to, you know, I, I can put the sizing on, the, on lines, I can put it on areas, I'll put it on areas. So I'll click on that and say Apply. And for element size, I will say 0.25 meters. And double check your units here. And if you need to change the units, this is where you change it. And then update the mesh. That didn't seem to change anything. That's because in the face sizing, I have a soft setting and the solver just took it, uh, or the mesher just took it as, you know, as guidance. And this is what you typically do when you have complex geometries. You can just give it some guidance on what kind of size, and then it'll adjust it according to the geometry. But for simple geometries, we want to tell the mesher, hey, don't mess with my setting. Take it as a hard setting. So I'll take that as a hard setting, and then I will update the mesh. And if I go and look at the mesh, now I see I have uh, four elements along here. So it's imposed that, um, that sizing that I gave it over here. But when I turned on the hard setting, and I have eight, eight elements along here. And here I have two messages. So if I click on that, and I can click on these warnings. And you know it's, it's, it's good to take warnings seriously. Other, otherwise, they can come back to bite you in, in, in uncomfortable places. And if I double click on it, um, it says some element sizes are larger than the global maximum size. That's because I have this advanced size function selected. So if I go under sizing, mesh sizing, 
and I see the advanced size function is turned on and you know and it has some uh, maximum size over here that is being um, that's being violated by our sizing and again advanced size function you want it for complex geometry for simple geometries you know you can just turn it off so when I turn it off and I update the mesh I'll see I I don't get the the warning anymore so now we have the mesh that we need and uh, let's next consider you know the number of algebraic equations that the um, we have told the solver to generate.